next stitch I'm going to show you is a drizzle stitch. This is one of my most favorite because it's a very three-dimensional stitch and I use it a lot for hair and some of my characters, for flowers, all kinds of funny things because they spiral off. One of my students actually used them for the mane on a giraffe and they are absolutely delightful, fun stitches to make. So there's a few steps to this one. We're going to begin by securing our thread and pulling it up through the bottom. And then we're going to take the thread off of our needle and place the needle really close to where the thread has come up. And then we're going to cast on by flipping your thread around just as if you were casting on if you were a knitter. And we're going to cast on however many stitches you want your drizzle stitch to be long. So I'm going to cast on six. That's three. And you can see I didn't do the stitches too tight because you're going to have to pull your thread back down through them. Now you're going to take your little needle threader because it makes life much easier and re-thread your needle. And then you're going to take this off of whatever. I put a piece of foam underneath it to secure my needle while I'm doing my cast on stitches. And then we're going to just pull that through. And here's your little drizzle stitch. So these are some little flowers that I created with the drizzle stitch. And as you can see, they're very three-dimensional. And if you're very, very ambitious, you can actually, when you get to the point before you pull your thread through, you can loop in a bead in there and pull that through too, so that you'll have a little bead sitting on the top of your drizzle stitch. These are a little bit longer, and these are a little bit shorter. So you can see how the amount of uh, cast-ons will change the size of your drizzle stitch. So this is an example of how I use the Starry Night Dazzle in the Drizzle Stitch to create hair for our little angel friends here. And we're going to go from this guy over to this one so you can see the different colors too. The next stitch I'm going to show you is a running stitch. I love using this stitch because it's like a simple sashiko stitch, but with the Starry Night Dazzles, it gives another little bit of glimmer and some dimension to a piece. So you can either use it to quilt a quilt, or you can use it as an accent. So I'm knotting my thread again, or you can again bring it up and anchor it from the back with your hand. Bring your needle straight up, and then come back down a very small distance and then you're going to come back up and try to keep your uh, thread lengths consistent. I personally don't mind if mine are not consistent because of the type of work that I do. It's more freeform and arty so I'm not as much of a stickler but you can be much more managed in the size of your stitches and then you'll just pull your thread through and you have a really pretty little running stitch. So here's the example of how I've used the running stitch in a background. This is not for quilting purposes, this one was just for accent. So another example of using the running stitch, I actually did a running stitch with a Starry Night Dazzle and then went back and did 
uh, crochet. I crocheted into the running stitch. You can probably see right here where the stitches are. And I did a chain and then came back up and looped. So I created the look of Spanish moss by using the running stitch and crocheting. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to make a little X. I use them a lot for texture as well, and they again look fabulous with the Starry Night Dazzles. So I'm going to knot the end of my thread to anchor it, or you can hold it from the back side. Bring your thread up. Go down on the diagonal about a quarter of an inch. And you're going to come back up perpendicular to the center of the stitch, about an eighth of an inch. Go across your stitch to the center, about an eighth of an inch, and go back down. And there's your X. And if you want to continue, you'll come back up above the last stitch on the same diagonal as your first stitch. Down, up, across the center of the stitch, and back down. And there are your X's. Here's an example of using the X stitch with the Starry Night Dazzles. You can see how nice an accent that is. This is on a patch of shibori wool on a little purse and then we did it along here and here it is in another colorway combined with the French knots and the whip stitch. So I hope you enjoy those first six stitches. They're the ones I use most frequently to create some really wonderful effects. I hope that they will be easy for you to follow and that you will use them a lot with these Starry Night Dazzles. Enjoy them. <laughs>